So far in this series of videos, we've learned about four different hypothesis tests. The one sample z-test, the one sample t-test, the independent samples t-test, and the dependent samples t-test. Now these tests are very powerful and very uniquely suited to sort of address different experimental contexts, but they share one big limitation. All of these tests so far involve only one or two groups of people. So the question is, what happens if you have more than two groups of people that you'd like to compare? For example, this study here. What if this is your research question? Are there any differences in aggression among various political groups? Well, there's more than two political groups to compare. It's not just Republicans and Democrats. We have the Green Party, Constitution Party, Libertarians, Modern Whigs, whatever floats your boat, and more. And so if we want to compare all of them, even an independent samples t-test, for example, would not be sufficient. So the goal for this analysis that we're going to learn, this type of analysis that we're going to learn, is to be able to measure differences along some dimension among subjects in more than two groups. And this is what we call the analysis of variance. This is the analysis that meets this need. By the way, I'm going to refer to the analysis of variance quite often as an ANOVA. This is just a shorthand that comes from analysis of variance because saying analysis of variance over and over would be pretty uh, wordy. Now, we're not going to worry too much about computing ANOVAs, especially uh, in this video series, a little bit beyond the scope of what we're doing here. But I do want to mention that, you know, you can compute ANOVAs just like anything else, and it has its own sort of test statistic. Z-tests obviously have the Z-test statistic. T-tests obviously have the T-test statistic. ANOVAs are a little bit different, but they have a test statistic as well, and that's called F. And it's actually an F ratio. ANOVAs are set up a little bit differently, again, beyond the scope of what we're doing here, but I want to at least mention analyses of variance are named analyses of variance because they basically are ratios between different variances and all of this. It's very different, but what you need to know is that F is the statistic we use when we're doing an analysis of variance. So let's start with a little bit of terminology. Uh, the terminology changes a little bit when we talk about ANOVAs, and this is because you know, the design behind ANOVAs tends to be a little bit more complicated. There's a little more moving parts, and so we need to be really particular with what we're referring to, what different components of the study are called. So first we have factors. Factors are the independent variables in the study. Uh, some ANOVAs that we're going to talk about have only one factor. Others have multiple, and I'll differentiate between that soon. And then we have levels, and those are basically groups within each independent variable. And again, I'm going to go over an example on the next slide. And then the response variable is basically what you care about. It's the dependent variable. It's the outcome that you're interested in. It's, you know, sort of the variable you want to know if all these factors and levels make a difference on. So let's talk about an example. Here we have the factor of political affiliation. This kind of, you know, maps onto what I was talking about a little bit ago. This would be, again, our factor, our independent variable. We want to know, does this make a difference on the response variable, the dependent variable? But political affiliation, this factor, has many different levels, the different political affiliations that you can be a part of, Republican or Democrat, and so on. These are the levels. And then again, response is our aggression. That's the outcome variable that we care about. So the analysis of variance asks, are there any significant differences among any of the different groups that we're testing? This is called an omnibus test. I'll write that here really quick, omnibus, which basically just means it's a general test that addresses this sort of a question. It doesn't say, is this specifically different than this? It just says, are there any significant differences among any of the groups? Could be that Republicans are less you know, aggressive than libertarians, or maybe libertarians are less aggressive than Democrat. Could be all sorts of differences. This is what the ANOVA addresses. Are there any differences at all? It asks whether any of the population means, in this case of aggression, of our groups, our different political affiliations, differ from one another. Now, what I've been referring to so far, this example with political affiliation, is basically a one-way analysis of variance. One-way ANOVAs measure differences between levels of a single factor. Single factor basically means one way. So then what happens if you have more than one factor, right? What happens if you have multiple factors that you want to investigate? What if you want to know, for example, 
you know, you're, you're talking about aggression and political affiliation, but maybe you think gender has a role as well. We know that males tend to be more aggressive than females, especially in the traditional physical aggression sense. So maybe we're interested in, you know, whether males and, you know, being of a certain political affiliation makes a difference on how aggressive you are. This is where the factorial analysis of variance comes into play. And it's called factorial because we can now investigate multiple factors, more than just political affiliation. Factorial ANOVAs are very powerful because we can get very specific with the types of comparisons we make. We can say, for example, through a factorial analysis of variance, this is going to be made up, but you get the idea. We can say, for example, that male Democrats are more aggressive than female Republicans. See, we're bringing into play two different factors to basically create a very specific and powerful explanation about the world. So here's the goal, to be able to compare whether differences exist between multiple factors. And here's the extra bit that makes factorial analysis of variance really powerful as well as in interactions between the levels of different factors. So this is very jargony. I'm gonna go over a specific example briefly that will kind of illustrate what I mean by interactions, this term here, because interactions are really important. That's kind of what I was referring to when I was talking about, you know, male libertarians being more aggressive than female Democrats, that sort of a thing that brings into play multiple factors in the explanation. Those are interactions between multiple factors, and that's really powerful to be able to understand. Many things in the world interact with one another, and factorial ANOVAs allow you to get at those interactions. So here's an example to illustrate. Here's my research question, something I care a lot about, basically commuting to campus. What's the fastest way for me to get to campus? I can address this question with an analysis of variance. And specifically, analysis of variances here are going to be appropriate because I have to answer a couple questions. I have to make a few decisions about how I should get to campus. One decision is literally what mode of transportation I should take advantage of. Uh, I'm in Denver, and so we have the light rail system here. So what I could do is, you know, to kind of take the light rail, which is pretty close to where I live now, uh, close to campus, and then walk uh, the rest of the way. Or I can just drive the whole way. So that's one decision I have to make. Another decision, though, is when I have to leave. I could be a really early bird here and rise, uh, you know, at 5 in the morning, something like that, and then uh, leave by 6.30 a.m., or I can be a little bit more reasonable, a little bit less masochistic, and I could leave by 8 a.m. So I have two big decisions to make here. Let's look at the structure of this study. So I have two different factors. The first is commute type, and there's two levels within this factor. Level one of this factor, A1, since this is factor A, I'm just adding a little bit of extra nomenclature here. That's not totally necessary, but I find it helpful. So factor A and then level A1, the first level of factor A, is taking the light rail and walking. That's one possibility for commute type. Another is driving to campus. So here we have one level with two factors. But then we have another level with two factors, the time of day that I plan on leaving. And I can leave either at 6.30 a.m. or at 8 a.m., another decision I have to make. So again, this is a factorial analysis of variance. That's what we'll need because we have two factors, each with two levels. A one-way ANOVA can only look at one factor with as many levels as you want. Factorial analyses of variances can look at as many factors as you want, each with many different levels, as many as you want. And in reality, I can even add a factor C here. Maybe I want to look at, you know, whether all of this changes depending on which day of the week I'm leaving, right? We can get really specific and really kind of powerful with how we model the world, how we figure out what the fastest way for me to get to campus is. So my response variable here is commute time in minutes, how fast it, it takes, basically how long it takes, how fast it is for me to get to campus. So I'll go ahead and show you some results. This is actually some data that I collected. Again, I really care about this. I want to be able to get to campus quickly. So here's all the different combinations. So for example, taking the light rail and walking at 6.30 a.m. from where I live, it takes me about 33 minutes to get to campus. Taking the light rail and walking at 8 a.m. takes me about 32 minutes. Driving at 6.30 a.m. is really quick. It's about 14 minutes. Driving at 8 a.m. is really slow. It's about 37 minutes. So what's going on here is that taking the light rail and walking is a very consistent mode of transportation. Regardless of when I leave, it's pretty, you know, standard. It's going to take about the same amount of time. Driving is really inconsistent, though. There's traffic, right, at certain times of the day. So when I leave at 8 a.m., it's really slow. But if I leave before most people are awake, before at least most people are, you know, commuting, then it's actually very quick, and I just speed all the way through. 
This, by the way, is what we call an interaction. Notice that I have to incorporate both variables, both factors in my explanation. If a friend walked up to me and said, you know, I live near you, when should I go to campus or, or what's the best way for me to go to campus, I kind of have to include both of those different factors in my explanation in order to give them a complete you know, and full explanation, a, a good advice basically. I can't just say, oh, leave at 6.30. Or I can't just say, oh, leave at 8. I can't just say, you know, drive. Because what if they leave at 8 a.m.? Then telling them to drive is very bad advice. I have to give them both uh, sort of factors in the explanation to give a complete explanation. And that's what we call an interaction. Factorial analyses of variance will tell you all of that information. And it'll analyze it statistically. So it's a great way of really, again, making these kinds of decisions. One last thing, I'll note that factorial plots, what you're seeing here, are typically what we use to kind of display and represent analysis of variance data. And here, I'll help you interpret some of this. So uh, on the y-axis, we have the time it takes for me to get to campus. This is the response variable. On the x-axis, we have time of day that I'm leaving, 6.30 a.m. versus 8 a.m., and commute type, whether I'm driving the red line or the blue line is taking the light rail and walking. So let's break this down. Let's look at just what we call main effects. Main effects in a factorial analysis of variance are essentially effects that only look at one single factor. You can kind of think of it like a one-way analysis of variance for just one factor that ignores everything else. So one main effect can be of time of day. I want to know, regardless of commute type, which is better, leaving at 6.30 a.m. or leaving at 8 a.m.? Well, the way we see that in this plot is by looking in between the two kind of points, endpoints on either side of this factorial plot. So if I want to know how long on average it takes me to get to campus at 6.30 a.m., regardless of the commute type, it's actually right here in between these two lines. And then at 8 a.m., it's right here, the kind of in between these two endpoints. That's the average time it takes for me to get to campus at 8 a.m., regardless of whether I'm driving or taking the light rail. So here we know that at 6.30 a.m., it's much faster to get to campus than at 8 a.m. So that's a main effect of time of day. But then we can do the opposite. We can forget about time of day, and we can just ask, is it better to drive, or is it faster, I should say, not necessarily better, better for the environment, would be taking the light rail and walking, but, or is it faster to take the light rail and walk? Well, that's the middle of these two lines. So if I'm looking just at driving, how long it takes me on average to drive, independent of whether I'm leaving at 6.30 a.m. or 8 a.m., it's the middle of the line. And then if I want to know how long it takes on average to take the light rail and walk, regardless of when I'm leaving, right, it's the middle of this line. So here we have another main effect. Driving is faster than taking the light rail and walking on average when we forget about the time of day. But again, both of those explanations would be misleading, and that's why we really care about the interaction here, which looks something like this. At 6.30 a.m., driving is much faster than taking the light rail and walking. But at 8 a.m., taking the light rail and walking is actually faster than driving. And this, again, is the power of the factorial analysis of variance. We get a full, complete explanation about the world. We get to really know when the best time to leave is. And now I know what decision I should make. Well, if I'm leaving at 6.30 a.m., I'll probably just drive. If I'm leaving at 8, might as well just take the light rail. So that's about the level of detail we're going to get to in this series of videos. I know we're not talking about computations or you know anything deeper than this, but I hope this gives you at least a sense of what analyses of variance are all about and really the, the very flexible and dynamic, diverse ways that we can take advantage of them to learn things about the world.